This is your host, Alice Formiga of the eOrganic Community of Practice with eExtension. You can find all eOrganic articles, videos, and recorded webinars on organic farming and research on our website at extension.org slash organic underscore production and on the eOrganic YouTube channel. So today, our presenters include Steve Peters of the Organic Seed Alliance and John DeRosier of With with the grain farm. John is a grower of heirloom and rare edible grains on his organic and biodynamic farm. He also does value-added processing and he feeds all of his farm animals with grains he grows himself. Okay, so um, welcome everyone. My name is John and I, I'm glad to be sharing with you today. Uh, seeds are something that are very, very important to me and I've had many wonderful, rich experiences. Muted. From from dealing with them, so I'm, I'm glad that you're interested in them too. Um, my part of the presentation, Steve was gonna give you more of the crop specific pieces. My section was more on the equipment, so uh, this is partly out of order, but I hope you just kind of bear with me and ask me any questions if you, if you have any that come up. Um, in general, the, the main division, and this is kind of a basic concept, and I'm sure you, most of you have already intuited this, but in general, with fruits, there's the two basic divisions and the main categories is between the wet and the dry. So um, that division plays important parts in the equipment because the difference between harvesting equipment for wet seeds and harvesting equipment for dry seeds is very different. However, after the seed from both of those, um, from both of those types of fruits are cleaned, um, from their basic fruit, then the equipment for cleaning the seed is essentially the same. So a lot of what um, we're gonna be talking about is really kind of specific for either wet seed or dry seed for the harvesting section. And then we're gonna come together and talk about the seed cleaning aspects for the seed that's done in the final steps. So that, that, seed, that seed processing equipment is the same regardless of if it's from a wet or dry seed. Um, I just gave a little uh, overview here of the different steps, more or less in order from uh, the initial harvest stage. And I'm assuming that you've gotten to the harvest stage covering anything about growing or any kind of production. So from the beginning of the harvest stage, there's the cutting of the seed, there's the gathering of the seed, whether this is by hand or with a piece of equipment, there's some drying or processing if needed, moving to the harvesting or threshing area, there's the actual threshing, whether by hand or with equipment, the basic cleaning process of separating the seed from the main bulk of material, which is uh, called winnowing for dry seed. And then from there, there's a whole just plethora of cleaning equipment, maybe some more drying, and then it's mostly gets into bagging, storing, any kind of pasteurizing to keep it free from bugs or, or anything that's, that's um, going to potentially damage the seed and then into shipping if you're into if you're into sales. So uh, I I personally have started from this is more than a few decades ago all on a small scale. My roots are in small scale ag and the micro scale I, I find that really appealing to me. I, I love all of its um, nuances and connections but I've also I grow on you know hundreds of acres now and so um, I've been all over the range, but what I find is that seeds have historically not changed, but what we actually do with the equipment is either enhance what we're normally doing by hand of breaking open something or, you know, gathering something, all that basically is done with a machine in a much more efficient or larger scale, but all of this can be done by hand. And so that's where I'd like to start is just kind of sharing with you that on a small scale, you can do all these steps by hand. And for me, these are the three main pieces of equipment that I that I like to use for harvesting. And this sickle here is a um, relatively inexpensive sickle, and it has serrated edges on its blade. And and you've probably seen them, or um, you've been maybe on some different you know seed company websites or tool sites. Like I know Johnny's has them, or other other sites. And the reason I like the serrated edge. And there's a lot of sickles out there without serrated edges. And the reason I like the serrated edge is because when you cut the seed stalk, it doesn't um, 
it shake the head as much. It kind of slices into the head. And sometimes that's very important for seeds that can shatter really easily. So for me, I really like that kind of serrated edge. The other tool, a machete, I like for larger seeded crops, like maybe a sunflower or um, sorghum, or um, I'm thinking of, uh, of crops like I even think of burdock or something that's not going to shatter when you hit it, but you want to cut the stalk. And a machetes to me work really great for that, but you can also use sides or sickles. Um, the side itself is really great for big um, swath crops, but I personally find that the scythe is uh, not necessarily as efficient as the hand sickle because you gather so much more bulk into the process that you have to clean all that out. So with a hand sickle, you can just grab right next to the seed head, you can cut it, and then you've already separated out a huge amount of that bulk material that needs to be processed. So if you're gonna do even an acre or two, um, I actually find the hand sickle is very efficient for that work. And it seems like it would take a while, but when you actually realize that you don't have to separate out all that bulk material, the, the um, hand sickle can be very efficient. Um, so on a small scale, I, I'm seeing a little bit of a typo on my slides, but um, it's like two pieces overlap. So I'm not sure if you can see that or not, but um, for uh, this is for basically wet seeded crops. And on a small scale, which I would consider between zero and maybe two acres, and, and a medium scale be between maybe two and 10 acres, and larger scale would maybe be beyond 10 acres. And that's all relative, of course, depending on the type of seed and your experience, but just kind of in a general sense. And for a small scale, really what you're doing is just gathering the seeds, I mean, it's gathering the fruits and scooping out the seeds and getting the seed away from the pulp. So there's all kinds of different ways, but the most uh, common, I would say, is just through buckets, just scooping it out, breaking open the buckets using some basic screens to separate that seed from the bulk material. And on a medium scale, they have machines that uh, kind of agitate and break apart this bulk material so that the seeds can fall through. And the process is essentially the same. It's just that when you're doing a huge, you know, volume of, of bulk material, it gets heavy and, you know, handling becomes more complicated. So they have machines that basically just kind of shred it, pulverize it, and try to get the seeds to sift out. For dry seeds, it's very similar, um, except that the, the machines can usually do a, a step of cleaning in addition to just the separating from the chaff. And in a wet seed crop like tomatoes, it's, it's, it's harder to get from a single step with the machine to go harvest the, the tomato, separate it out, you know, break it apart, and then come out with a really clean seed. In dry seed crops, the machines are very capable of doing that. You can go into a stand of crop and thresh the heads, and the seed can come out almost perfectly clean because the seed is dry and it can be run across and screened. So on a small scale for, for dry seeded crops, you can use essentially the same kind of tools, the hand sickle or the scythe. And if you're talking about maybe carrots or parsnips or um, I'm thinking um, thing that has like a dry seed, legumes, beans, uh, um, any kind of seeded like a, like a flower seed or anything like that, then basically you're going to cut the stalk and just run it across something that separates the seed from the head, which is just some kind of uh, agitation and you could use in a small scale you could put it in a pillowcase i use a lot of sheets and um, i really like the really high quality bed sheets where the weave on the bed sheet is really tight so none of the small seeds fall through um, some of the tiny seeds that are like poppy seeds or even something like a yarrow seed is very small so if you have a sheet that has a very tight weave on it you can capture all those seeds and you can just trample it you can beat it um, you can you know, have multiple people out there trampling it, but the idea is just basically to separate it. And then separating it from a small scale is really just pouring it from one place to another and letting the wind blow out that chaff. On a medium scale, the equipment, um, for this scale, I would, I would suggest that you do a little research and definitely ask questions like here or in other people about how, how you're going to proceed with your operation because I find that medium scale farm equipment 
has a bigger lure in that we can find older farm equipment like these pole type combines. One of the famous ones is the Alice Chalmers All Crop. And these are, I have one myself, they're very amazing machines. Um, but they're from an old period of time and the parts are more difficult to find. They're from, um, you know, the, the machinery itself is often old or rusty and, and it takes a lot of skill and know how to, to kind of repair them and some experience. They're very basic, but it does take some time. So if you're into that scale, then um, consider, consider that you're gonna spend some time messing around with the machines and that you're gonna, if you're not familiar with that, you'll want some support for that. Uh, but they do do amazing, amazing jobs at threshing seeds. And most of them are capable of handling just about all seeds uh, from anything from the small seeds all the way up to the large seeds. Um, on bigger scale, uh, if you're considering like you want to grow into a larger scale operation, then self-propelled harvesters or what we call combines or um, anything that's kind of self-propelled for harvesting is kind of where you're going to go. I'm imagining that anybody that's into that scale has already kind of understood that. So if you have any questions, you can ask me. But um, the, the larger scale, if you're going to get to the scale where you're doing you know thousands of pounds of onion seed or you know, any kind of seed on that scale, then having a self-propelled harvester is pretty essential. Once the seed has been cleaned from the, from the uh, initial, you know, plant material, the debris, then we get into the seed cleaning equipment. And seed cleaning equipment is, is actually, I'm finding to be starting more readily, like there's, I see more of it around. I think in the last decade or so, it seems like more people are getting interested in small scale seed things, uh, grain cleaning and small cleaning, and I'm seeing more things circulate. So if you look on Craigslist, you'll you'll probably find more of those pieces of equipment. But once the seed from either wet seed crops like a squash or tomato, once that seed has been separated and it's um, essentially dry, then the seed cleaning equipment will work for that just as well as it'll work for anything in a dry seed crop. And and the most basic equipment is the screen cleaner. And that's the um, image that you see in the top corners. Um, in the top left corner, there's a drawing and it basically shows how the seed falls in the top. And as it passes over a screen, it falls through the screen and the big material is taken away off the top and the seed falls through. And then the next screen is um, smaller than the seed you wanna keep. And so small material falls through and then it passes over a fan. So what you're left with is the seed itself. And once you have that seed, it's it can be very clean from that stage. So a seed cleaner is one of the basic basic tools of operation. And you can use those same screens that's in a machine by hand. And there's a lot of sets out there now that are really nice. And on the bottom left, um, you'll see uh, an example of that. And they're basically simple handheld, maybe within you know one or two feet in um, in size and you can stack them up and shake seed and seed will sift through the different screen sizes and that's really great for seed that has a lot of uh, you know maybe fine seed and you want to get out some of those sticks that it's really hard to get out like carrot seeds or something and um, it's really helpful to do that with some screens if you're doing it all by hand um, I would say for a small scale operation, like if you want to do, um, you know, anywhere from uh, uh, like an acre, even two acres of crops, then having a seed cleaner and some hand screens, it can be very viable and you can make that, that work and you can do a lot of cleaning. If you get beyond that, then um, you're probably going to pick up where you want to have a seed go through some other kind of cleaning stages because your harvesting equipment will be different and you'll probably end up with different kinds of uh, uh, grades of seed and you're going to be less selective about picking the perfect seed because in a small scale you can kind of go through and grab just exactly what you want because you're kind of hand harvesting as you get bigger and you have more bulk to harvest you end up kind of gathering in more stuff that needs to be separated out so um as you get kind of larger scale, it gets more and more um, kind of important to separate out some of that other things. So there's aspirators, which are things that blow for air, circulating air, gravity tables, works on the density of the seed, not the size. 
um, indent separators are uh, a machine that has little pockets and the seed sits inside the little pocket. Brush machines agitate the seed and separate some of the pieces out. Um, spiral separators work on the, the, basically the shape, like seeds that are more round, pick up more speed. So like brassicas, um, those little circular brown round seeds are a very different shape than a carrot seed. And those will come out different on a spiral separator just because they'll, they pick up more momentum as they spiral. Uh, although they're very expensive, they do exist now where, where things can be cleaned by color, separated by color. And so they have machines that you can have, um, you know, two kinds of beans together. You can have a white bean and a brown bean, and they can be the same size and shape, and the machine will be able to separate them by color. And then uh, kind of finally, they have machines that are, have screens that are, uh, have a large surface area of screen, and usually they're circular, and they can separate seeds to a really fine degree of, of precision. So you can get exactly the same size of seed. And that is often helpful when you're selling seed and you wanna have a seed that's, uh, you know, like a large seed that's really vibrant and healthy. And you can separate that out with, with machines that are that pick the size very well. Um, I just wanna talk a little bit about safety just real quick and I'm not gonna hit on it very much, but I just wanna tell you if you're shifting from small scale to any kind of machine operation, then please make sure that you have your safety because there's been, it, it's so easy to, to misjudge a machine for the speed at which it does things and just make sure that you have, you know, extra protection and gloves and a mask especially brings up a lot of dust and, and um, from, from using the machine. And uh, make sure that you have your kids and your pets and everybody's aware of what's happening. Something very important to keep track of is just the, the speed at which machines operate, and especially the older machines, like an all crop or some of the um, some of the stationary threshers that look, you know, pretty safe, but they have belts and things that swing around, and and you know, hair can get caught in them. It's it's very dangerous. So please be careful. And uh, one last thing I kind of wanted to touch on. Uh, is when you're trying to decide about having, uh, you're moving from a small scale, like a, with hands to a scale, maybe including machines, um, there's a big allure that if, if you're doing something by hand and you're feeling kind of tired and you're thinking, wow, if I had a machine, I could do this and I could do it more efficiently. And that could be true, but also recognize that you can have a machine, get the machine and there's also an opportunity that maybe doing things by hand can actually be very efficient too. So just be aware from my experience that it goes both ways. You can have a machine and spend a lot of time um, tending the machine when you could have been doing it by hand. And you can also do things with the machine that you've spent a long time doing by hand that you can just do very simply with the machine. So a lot of that question to me is answered not necessarily by how the process takes place because machines basically do the same process that you're doing by hand. What really comes into the play more for me around that decision is when does it become financially viable to use a machine? So if you're going to spend a bunch of time out there harvesting, um, again, I keep thinking of carrot seeds, um, and you're going to spend a lot of time winnowing and, and harvesting and cutting and, and something would help you to be able to thresh those the seeds, then you know, it's, it's something that you have to consider with your scale and your time. Um, there's also a, an opportunity to um, borrow equipment or rent and buy equipment that, um, you know, you're gonna kind of try to decide if you're gonna use it all the time or use it part of the time. And so for the next, I just gave you a little example on the next slide and maybe it's, maybe it's helpful or maybe it's not, but an example of just keeping track of how to decide how much you're spending with that piece of equipment and you can go back and look at it it's not really wasn't fully covered in in you know the subject matter but i wanted to put it out there if you if people had questions um about you know how much does it cost to run a piece of equipment because that's a big deal in terms of if you're going to step up from hand scale to using equipment and the last slide i have is is just how much does it cost versus how much does it rent or how much does it cost to rent a piece of equipment so that you can think about um, investing in some of the equipment. Because some of it's very expensive. And if you're only on two acres, 
uh, it can be very expensive to invest, you know, five, ten, fifteen thousand dollars in a piece of equipment. And if you're only going to use it for, you know, ten or twenty hours out of the year, does that make sense for you? Yeah. Okay. Um, so we do have a question. It says these are great for large scale when we grow. Um, what do you recommend for smaller scale or hand use? I have some sifters, but find that they're not fine enough for the seeds I'm saving, and there's a lot of non-seed matter sifting through. So uh, uh, I'm thinking when you're talking about really fine, I'm, I'm imagining like uh, like smaller than a brassica, or um, you know. It, uh, so if, if that is the case, I'll, I'll let you write in and say, but, you know, because some of the flower seeds are extremely tiny, they're like they're little specks, and they do make really fine, fine screens for that, but you may not find an actual set of hand screens, and if you go to some of the companies that make these screens, you can just buy the screen, and then you can make your own hand screen. So okay, that's yeah, one she was talking about flower seed, she said. So okay. yeah, that's great. Yeah. <laughs> so that's one that's one thing that I found is that you can actually find those screens. They won't be in a nice, you know, box or anything like that, but you can actually just make a little frame for them. Uh, the other the other thing, just a really simple way of doing it, I'm sure you've probably already tried this, is if you have your seeds in a bucket um, and you just swirl them in, in a in a circle, the the chaff will actually move to the center and you can just kind of lift it out like that if you you probably already tried that, but it's just something in general that when you circle the seeds, the the bulk chaff will kind of sift to the center. Um, and another thing is to use the the fans, depending on your your uh, the seed type that you're actually working with. If you put that put out a sheet and you pour the seed in front of the fan and it falls in the ground, I found that what I do is I have to kind of make a choice about where that line I want to draw. But if you let the whole thing kind of fall out in front of the fan, there'll actually be a little bit of a, a fanning operation there. Um, go okay. ahead. Um, can you suggest a couple of places to buy the hand screens? Yeah. Um, um, there's a company that sells the, screen, the, the equipment um, called Commodity Trader International, and they sell all kinds of uh, like used equipment that they've refurbished and remade. And the gentleman there, Char uh, Charles Stoden, is a very friendly guy. And, and if you ask him, he may have has some extra screens around. The other company, um, Clipper, you can um, talk to them and they make screens. Um, seed Burrow is a company that deals with uh, all kinds of seed processing equipment. And they, I think they're actually a Canadian company, but you can find them online at Seed Burrow. And they have all kinds of seeds screens. Um, another one is um, the Carter Carter Day Company does all kinds of uh, uh, seed cleaning equipment, and they would they would probably have seeds uh, screens to sell. Um, okay. Yeah, that's great. Last year we did a very similar presentation on seed harvesting as part of our 2016 organic seed production webinar. And you guys have managed to get the privilege of having John's addition to that presentation. Um, but Steve was going to talk about um, a lot of the same things, although a little bit different from what we talked about last year. So I would very much recommend that everybody um, Google um, Organic Seed Production 6 Webinar Series 2016, and there is a recorded presentation there um, by other members of the Organic Seed Alliance and some cooperating farmers that have a lot of very useful information about seed harvesting and when to harvest and that sort of thing. So um, I apologize that Steve wasn't able to be with us today, but we're very grateful to have had John filling in for us. And um, I just want to um, direct everybody to where you can find um, all of our archived webinars, many of which are or about organic seed production. Those are all here on um, the archive page for eOrganic webinars. And then you can also just go to the eOrganic YouTube channel and you can find them there. If you have a question about um, anything related to organic farming um, or organic seed production, um, you can go to the link on your screen there. We are um, pretty much 
finished here then, um, but I do recommend the other presentation on seed harvesting to get anything that you missed today. <laughs> and thank you all for joining us.